Welcome everybody to Unfiltered with Pastor David. Pastor David, how are you? How you doing, John? Good. I want to welcome those who are joining us here today. Pastor, today the question I wanted to ask was centered around healing. We received uh, in one of our social media platforms, somebody asking us about uh, your thoughts on, on healing services and if they're legit. Uh, if people go, are they really healed? And the people that go, and if they're not healed, does it mean that they don't have faith? The idea of setting up a time for God to heal has, uh, has no biblical basis. You never see anything declared in any of the New Testament books that relate to uh, the healings and miracles of, of the Lord and the apostles. You never see that Jesus ever said, you know, you need to show up in this town on Tuesday because we're going to have healings, <laughs> right? So I've always been skeptical, skeptical of such things because I've never believed, and Bible doesn't teach, that you can orchestrate the movement of the Holy Spirit. You know, God is sovereign. He is not, he is not uh, His will is not determined by me. He is sovereign. He has His own will. He does as He pleases, right? And when it comes to the area of healing, um, that's really under His own control. And so what we do is ask, and uh, we pray that the Lord will answer in the affirmative. And, and so beginning from there, um, I've never felt that there is a legitimacy in healing crusades and healing ministries or even as people who are referring to themselves as operating in the uh, office of or role of a healer. Mm. <clears throat> and so God is our healer. Do I, do I believe that God heals? Well, of course. I mean, you see healing miracles, uh, a variety of them in the old as well as obviously in the new. There was uh, no, no illness that Jesus could not heal. You know, and, and Matthew and Mark and others, uh, Matthew makes it clear when he says that he healed all manner of diseases. Mm. So there was nothing impossible for the Lord. I mean, my goodness, if he could cause the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk, and even raise the dead. And the Bible, as far as I can see over the years that I've read and studied and been taught, um, doesn't close the door for God's supernatural abilities to continue. Um, I, I, I obviously, and every, every time we close the service, as you know, John, we pray if, that God might do healing for those who might have a request. For, for the scriptures teach us that our God is a healer. And one of the ways he's referred to is he is God the healer, the Lord the healer, and, and all of that. And so, yeah, we do believe in healing. What I have a problem with is people orchestrating the movement of the Spirit by scheduling him for this Tuesday or for hmm. two weeks or three weeks. We're going to see that. Not only that, but when people say that you're not healed because of your lack of faith, then that makes my faith sovereign over the will of God, you know. And so I, I believe that what you're doing at that point is you are, you are saying that God is subject to my request and the intensity and great amount of when Jesus himself said it's a mustard seed because it's not a faith like a mustard seed. You can move a mountain. It, his point, obviously, is that uh, it's a, it may, even if you have a small amount of faith, you have a huge God who can do the impossible. And so when people go so far as to say, you, um, you, know, you didn't receive your healing because your faith isn't strong enough, that's putting an awful lot of pain and guilt on a person who's already suffering with right. an illness. Mm -hmm. My mom suffered with illnesses from the time she was 24 until she died at 83. Wow. And you can't imagine the amount of prayers that I and others prayed for my mom, that God would please heal my mom, please heal Bonnie, and uh, ultimately she received the healing when she passed from this life into the presence of the Lord. That's when she got her perfect healing. So anytime somebody says, you aren't healed for lack of faith, they're a, they're a charlatan. There was a particular man I'll leave unnamed who quote unquote ministered in um, the LA area. And he, he, he <laughs> said, and I quoted him one time in one of our Bible studies, God doesn't want to live in a house. 
that he can't see out of the windows and you know he starts describing the hearing if you don't have hearing or you can't walk he didn't want to live in that kind of house well his wife uh, came up with cancer and she died of it but prior to her death I still remember and it broke my heart it saddened me to see this this frail woman who came up to apologize to the church because she had become ill because her husband had made his money and his reputation on, uh, on healing. And so I, I have a real difficulty with those kinds of things. Another quote-unquote healer who, who actually was one of those who ushered in this positive confession movement. He was pretty much what they call the father of the positive confession movement. Those who know, know who I'm speaking about. Well, he told everybody, you know, that you could be healed, guaranteed. He died of a disease. Mm. I believe it was a heart disease, but he died of a disease. So physician, heal thyself. When you go out and you, you are telling people that you're guaranteed for this, and if you don't receive it, it's a lack of faith. They, they are putting guilt on people, and they're not taking in the full counsel of God. Healing is part of the ministry of Christ. And healings, I believe, continue to this day. And yes, we've had people in our fellowship who have come to me, speaking to me, who have, have been healed. But I've prayed for many people over the years, mm -hmm. beginning with my mom, and, and I will not take responsibility for them not being healed. Uh, I, 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 do not, I do not claim to be a healer. God is the healer. Right. <clears throat> I don't know of an office in Scripture that is the office of the healer. You know, these signs follow those who believe, and there are things that, that God will do, but those are the supernatural acts that cause us to realize that miracles do happen. And a miracle, loosely defined, is something that no human being could perform. It has to be an outside source, and the miracle has to be supernatural in nature. And so we usually attribute that kind of definition to the works and powers and uh, the miracles of Christ, you know. And so, uh, we'll never have a healing service. <laughs> I don't see it in Scripture. I don't believe that you can schedule God to do things at certain times. God is sovereign, and my responsibility is to ask. And to ask in faith, nothing doubting. So, we ask because we have a healing God. And... It's not that person's lack of faith if they're not healed, and it's not my lack of faith if they're not healed, uh, because ultimately God is sovereign and determines who He's going to heal. We're commanded to ask. God is the one who will, according to His will, who will perform that work. And so anybody who is saying, you've got to go to this healing, well, this healing service, I have to say this, and I'll close with this, John. Um, Many times uh, these people are not only professing to heal, but there's no, there's no doctor mm -hmm. that's uh, confirming these. Jesus told uh, the, the leper to go to the priest and perform the sacrifices as a witness to them so they could see, because only God can cleanse a leper, and that's the whole point. You know, go and show yourself to the priest and, and give the sacrifices that are required in the law. Why? Well, because it's a testimony. So anybody who claims to be healed and refuses to go to a doctor because they think, well, that's lack of faith, isn't following scripture. Because if, if somebody is genuinely healed, then you ought to go to the doctor so the doctor can say, oh, this is, this is out of my hand. I didn't, this is, this is something beyond me. That's a sign to them because the healing actually is, is, is revealing the presence of God in a supernatural fashion. And so you go and have it validated before you start running around saying, I've been healed, I've been healed, and then you die of that disease. Well, that's, uh, and, and again, that can really hit someone's faith, especially when the message is out there that your faith isn't, well, brother, your faith just wasn't strong enough. But I think about you teaching the Word every week, uh, twice a week, uh, three times a week with both services on Wednesday evening, and how many healed hearts they have been, maybe not so much the physical healing, but the healed hearts of brokenness and the healed hearts of addictions and the healed hearts of, of just a, a life that has been destroyed. And you see God's work at work, God's word at work every single work. And that's where the, every single week, 
That's where, for like for me, that's where the healing came from. It was God's word. It wasn't you instituting a healing room or a healing uh, service. It was the word of God. And very often, week. John, these healing rooms require some admission price. Yes. They make a lot of money on the faith of God's people. And if there's no outrage in a person's heart over what's done to God's sheep, they don't have a heart for the Lord. Because I, I guess I've been around too long. 52 years I've walked with the Lord. I've seen a lot of things in these years. I've pastored this church over 41 years. And prior to that, I was an assisting pastor. And prior to that, I was teaching studies at homes. And the idea that you could, you could injure somebody mm. so callously. And I have to tell you, there are quite a number of people out there who, who really don't care about you or me, who really don't. They just don't, John. You, you, we are stepping stones to their road mm. to greatness. And, and I've seen it too many times. I, I've seen too many hurt people. And uh, some of these people who, 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 who profess this, you know, they have their own private jets mm. because they don't want to fly in a commercial airline because it's, that tube is filled with demons, you know, it's just <laughs> crazy. And the fact that these people give money to these charlatans just shows the heart of the people. And when Jesus saw that, that woman giving her mites, that widow with her, her mites and all, she's a picture of, of, of the sacrifice and love and the giving. And even in her condition, which was in poverty, she had great faith, faith great enough for Jesus to use as an example. Because he saw people throwing great sums into, into the, uh, the trumpets, into the uh, offering box. And, but he focused his attention on a woman and he said, this woman has, has given all she has to live. What is he saying? This is a woman that is in contrast to the Pharisees who are making money off your souls. This is a woman who is yielding herself to, to a God that she trusts and mm. loves, even in her poverty. And so I, I'm telling you, there's just so much error, and it's still out there. They're still on TV. They're mm. still selling their, their, uh, their healing cloths and their prayer mats and these seeds of faith. They're still out there. And I'm, I get outraged by it. I, I, I had a, an, a mama who was sick who died, whose last year of life was on a bed with, with a, a bag because of a colostomy, and uh, who died in a slow, painful way and in the arms of my sister. And for, for someone to say, oh, she didn't have any faith. I, I, I believe that that causes God not only, not only uh, sorrow of heart and grief over what his quote-unquote children say, but I believe it causes anger too, mm -hmm. because it's just wrong to hurt those whom God loves. Amen. With God. that said, May we always keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. That's the key. <laughs> Let your will be done, not right. mine. Amen. Let your will be done. I like how you put that in perspective, how our will scheduling God at this time, this time, and this time. It's ridiculous. And uh, we're going to, you know... It, God's uh, the, showing up. You need to be here. <laughs> that your receive. faith is so sovereign over everybody else and, and even over God Well, himself. you got to come and see me because I'm the man God is using at this moment mm -hmm. and I need a new pair of shoes, so make sure your offering's <laughs> large. Oh, I'm sorry, John. Let's stop. Yes, right there, we can go so I long. Can get angry over it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Pastor, for sharing on that, uh, and for the one whoever re, uh, sent that question. And thank you so much. And and if you guys do have questions, you can send it through social media, and we can see if there'll be something that we can chit chat about Possibly. here. Uh, we do want to invite you to our Sunday morning services at eight thirty and ten forty five. Pastor, you're taking us through Mark. I mean, I was looking over your notes before uh, for Sunday, and it's going to be I. It's going to be a good study. I think that the that it's yeah. I'm looking forward to giving that study. It's very touching to me. And uh, well, behold the man. Yeah, behold. It's, it's going to be a good study. Invite your friends and family to come out and join us uh, next Wednesday. We will have another unfiltered between now and then. But we do have communion, so you can get that on your calendar. We do have our Bible study uh, first on Wednesday night, and then communion. And just want to invite you guys out, men. Reminder that we have our Super Bowl breakfast. Mm -hmm. Tickets are in sale. Anthony Munoz is going to come out. That'd be great. February fourth. That's going to be a Saturday. You can get your tickets at the gazebo after service, or you can actually register online. Thank you guys for tuning in. Pastor David, thank you so much. God bless you guys.